We're live in the LA Times newsroom, and we're talking about the arrest today of Assessor John Noguez in a uh, burgeoning corruption scandal involving the illegal uh, changing of property values at the assessor's office. And uh, there were three people arrested today, and we've been covering it all morning. And we're joined now by Times reporter Ruben Vivas, who's been covering this story for months now. And it's great to have you here, Ruben. Thanks for having me. Okay, so. Uh, Basically, this has been a scandal that's been brewing for months now involving allegations that uh, the assessor, John Noguez, uh, uh, changed the value of properties that were represented by a property sort of uh, manager, essentially, and that the question is whether he got some kind of kickback for it. That was alleged in the um, indictment today. Ruben, you were actually at the home of John Noguez when he was arrested, um, one of the few people who was there to observe what happened. Can you describe just what it was like when he was taken into custody? Sure. It was uh, actually a very calm um, incident. Uh, the uh, This was around 8.30 uh, in the morning uh, when officers or uh, investigators from the district attorney's office uh, moved in and uh, knocked on the door. He opened it and uh, they took him into custody. At that point he was uh, wearing um, you know shorts and a blue shirt and a baseball cap and uh, they took him inside for a few minutes uh, so he can change and then they brought him back out uh, without any uh, incident. Okay and it's interesting uh, Ruben we actually have video that you took of this Mr. Douglas, you care to say anything? Hey, I'll hold back, please. Stay right there Now, Ruben, it's interesting. I was reading the indictment and looking at some of your coverage, uh, and uh, one of the things that uh, it said uh, was that. Noguez received, uh, I believe, $185,000 from uh, Solari, who's one of the people arrested today. He was the property official, uh, while he was running for election in 2010. And that then several of Solari's uh, properties received reductions once uh, uh, Noguez took office. Can you kind of describe what they're saying happened? Sure. I mean, in, uh, in, in the uh, complaint, it also alleges that. Uh, uh, John Nogas uh, hired, uh, promoted one of his, uh, this longtime county employee, uh, Mark McNeil, and placed him in a very high position where he could uh, sort of negotiate these um, deals between uh, the county on his side, since he's Mr. McNeil, is representing the county, and uh, versus Mr. Solari, who is representing his clients. And so that sort of made the operation easy uh, enough in terms, at least that's how prosecutors saw it, that when uh, at an assessment appeals board meeting, uh, this is a uh, board meeting where you go where after you and the county have uh, not agreed on the assessment of your property, you go to the assessment appeal board and uh, at the board either the county can say well we recommend this uh, value and uh, the tax agent representing uh, the client will agree or disagree and ask for something much more or less and so essentially what was going on here uh, Mr. Solari was getting some some great deals for his clients. Right and the question of course is whether that was illegal or not and the DA has in fact charged that it was and one of the things the DA said in the charging documents was that um, after this sort of became publicized, the LA Times started writing stories, the DA had started an investigation last year on it, that um, Noguez tried to start to repay this money uh, to um, Solari, saying it were loans, and they sort of said this appeared very deceptive, a panic move to try to um, clear this. And I guess what we really don't know, Ruben, at this point is how much farther this goes. We're talking about, I believe, about 16 properties in this in, in these uh, charges, and we're talking about, I think, more than a million dollars, they say, the county lost because of this. But we know the investigation is much broader than this. 
Right, right. And I mean, the total amount, as, as you mentioned, is, is $1.16 million. And uh, District Attorney Steve Cooley said that that could go up even higher. And uh, this is a much broader investigation. Uh, they have made it clear that it's still ongoing, that it's not done. And so we uh, are interested to see what's going to happen next. Uh, you know, some of the uh, players also in, uh, sort of involved in this investigation have been developers, have been, um, you know, other uh, well financial uh, folks in uh, the West Side, which we've written, written about. And uh, this also brings in the campaign contributions, you know, whether there was some in, uh, money laundering going on in the uh, campaign elections. Right. And we do know the investigation is continuing. And I think one of the things that will also be really interesting, as you alluded to, Ruben, is whether this goes beyond uh, Solari, whether they actually attempt to bring a charge against the property owners who had hired them to get these reductions. And, of course, the degree to which they say or can prove that uh, these property owners were actually in on this alleged scam. We just don't know that yet. You know, one other thing I want to ask you about, Ruben, before we go, which is you and Jack Dolan, your colleague on these investigations, wrote a really interesting story about how one of the figures in this scandal, uh, Scott Schegner, who's an assessor who was allegedly involved in some of these uh, improper reduction of property values, that he is also in a kind of separate, um, separate way has um, been implicated in something at USC involving uh, him uh, giving money to USC athletes. Um, we don't know of a specific connection between the two other than that he's kind of at the center of both of them. Could you um, tell us whether we have any indication that the DA's office is looking into that USC connection to this case? Um, we, we don't have an exact idea yet whether they are looking into it, but they, they sort of hinted in the complaint. Uh, they mentioned that there were some payments that were given to Mr. Schenter, and those payments were allegedly given to his wife. And so that brings us to the question which we've reported on about Ms., uh, Mr. Joe McKnight, which we've shown that there were some documents that hinted that he may have uh, given him some payments. We saw a plane ticket that alleged that he, that Schenter bought for him, and uh, he also provided a vehicle uh, during his time at USC uh, as a tailback there. And so it would uh, certainly be interested, and they do hint at it that they are going to be looking at uh, at some of these issues. Uh, just well, we, yeah, we know we're, they're aware of them. We don't know whether how much they're going to actually be involved in this investigation. Right. Well, Ruben, this is a fascinating end, uh, at least, or maybe just the beginning in this uh, corruption case. Uh, as we know, uh, Mr. Noguez uh, has uh, repeatedly denied any wrongdoing. He is still the assessor, still being paid his um, $190,000 a year plus salary. Mr. Solari has also denied any wrongdoing to us through his attorney. So we'll just have to kind of wait and see how this goes, right, Ruben? All right. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>